Although there still aren't nearly enough graphics cards to go around, Nvidia has just announced two new models to its flagship GeForce RTX 30 series. The first of these is the 3080 Ti, which we'll be taking a closer look at in this video, and the 3070 Ti, which will benchmark next week and release the video upon its launch. As you'd expect from its name, the new 3080 Ti sits between the existing 3090 and the 3080. However, in terms of specs, it's actually much closer to the 3090 than it is the 3080. For instance, whilst the 3090 has 10,496 CUDA cores, the 3080 Ti has a very similar 10,240 and the 3080 has a much smaller 8,704. This is a tiny difference really, so what separates the 3090 from the 3080 Ti? Well, the answer is the memory, with the original 3090 being armed with 24 gigabytes and the new cut down 3080 Ti having 12 gigabytes. Now, we don't expect this to make much difference, if any, to games, so the 3080 Ti could actually be a much better buy for gamers. However, for compute tasks such as rendering and deep learning, the extra 12 gigabytes on the 3090 means it's still the card to go for. We put the GeForce RTX 3080 Ti through its paces up against the existing high-spec RTX 30 series GPUs plus the nearest equivalent AMD Radeon RX 6000 series GPUs. As these are all high-end graphics cards, all the benchmarks will run at the highest quality settings with all the eye candy dialed up to the max at two resolutions, 2560 by 1440 and 3840 by 2160. All of the cards were tested with the latest NVIDIA and AMD drivers using a fresh install of Windows 10 Home in one of our 3XS gaming PCs. Dirt 5 is a popular racing game, although as you can see from the frame rates, it's not much of a challenge for the high-end graphics cards at 1440p. Interestingly, the RTX 3080 Ti turned out to be slightly faster than the RTX 3090 in this test, although the performance difference is negligible. There's a pattern that we saw in the other games too. Upping the resolution to 4K, the RTX 3090 took pole position, with the RTX 3080 Ti so close behind, there's practically no performance difference between the two. Both cards are exceptionally powerful and the fastest gaming GPUs to date. Gears Tactics is a popular turn-based strategy game and just like Dirt 5 shows how easy 1440p is for such high graphics cards, with the average frame rate approaching 150 frames per second. In this test, the RTX 3080 Ti and RTX 3090 turned in identical frame rates. When it comes to graphics cards, increasing the resolution to 4K really helps to separate the men from the boys. Whilst the RTX 3080 Ti and the RTX 3090 performed identically, they also performed for brilliantly far faster than any other GPU and are clearly the way to go for 4K gaming. Metro Exodus remains one of the most challenging games to run at a smooth frame rate, especially once you turn on DXR ray tracing. The graph for this game is more complex than the other games as we've tested both with DXR on, which you can see in blue, and with DXR off, which you can see in grey. The NVIDIA GPUs also have a third bar in orange with both DXR ray tracing and DLSS enabled. DLSS is NVIDIA's AI-powered rendering technique that uses the tensor cores to upscale games, giving you the benefits of higher resolutions without sacrificing high frame rates. In other words, if a game supports DLSS, then you really ought to turn it on. Having seen how the cards perform in the other games, it should come as no surprise that the RTX 3080 Ti and the RTX 3090 turned in near identical frame rates at 1440p in Metro Exodus. The graph also shows how much more efficient Nvidia's ray tracing hardware is than AMD's, with a far smaller performance drop occurring when you enable DXR. The Nvidia GPUs also have DLSS up their sleeves, helping to regain some of the lost frame rates, giving you the best of both worlds. Running Metro Exodus at 4K with all the eye candy turned up is a big challenge for any GPU, but the RTX 3080 Ti is up to the challenge with a smooth frame rate of 75 frames per second with DXR ray tracing and DLSS both enabled. We also ran 3D Mark Port Royal benchmarks on all the cards, and despite being a synthetic benchmark rather than a real game, Port Royal is popular with gamers as it's so easy to run, so it's definitely worth including here. Port Royal is the first 3D Mark benchmark to feature ray tracing. No surprises here really, the RTX 3080 Ti and RTX 3090 are near identical in performance and much faster than any other GPU. 
The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 rewrote the rules of what to expect from a graphics card, delivering high frame rates at 4K even with gorgeous DXR ray tracing enabled. However, armed with 24 gigabytes of memory and a commensurately high price, it was more of a card for content creators and data scientists than it was for gamers. The new RTX 3080 Ti fixes that problem, dropping the memory down to a more practical 12 gigabytes, plenty enough for gaming, whilst barely reducing the number of cores. This means that to all intents and purposes, the RTX 3080 Ti and RTX 3090 provide the same frame rates in games. So once you consider the price difference between the two, it really doesn't make sense for gamers to buy the RTX 3090 anymore. The RTX 3080 Ti is the new king. Just don't tell the RTX 3090 that. It might get upset that its cheaper little brother is a better choice. Scanless NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 Ti graphics cards from a wide variety of manufacturers and they're also available in our 3XS gaming PCs. However, like all graphics cards, supply is extremely limited for the foreseeable future. A buy button will appear on the web page when free stock becomes available and we recommend purchasing online as the fastest way to complete your order as we can't guarantee that stock will remain available whilst you wait in a queue on live chat or over the phone. Thanks for watching, follow the links in the description for more information and don't forget to keep an eye out for the 3070 Ti benchmark video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that one.